Excellent. So again, I want to welcome everyone to this talk on AB 890. This I'm Barbara Phillips with Nurse Practitioner Business Owner, and our guest tonight is Melanie Balestra, who is a nurse practitioner and attorney in California. And those of you in California probably already know her. And uh, she is the go-to person for what NPs can do in California and what the laws are. So, Melanie. Okay. Let's share your yeah. information. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start answering questions. There's a lot. One from Amy Atkins. Can I get credit for all my years of practice for supervision in other states? No, you can't. Your supervision has to be in California. If you got them in other states, it doesn't count, unfortunately. So you have to be supervised a minimum of three years in California and have the attestation signed. Now, when is the attestation coming out? We don't know for sure. The uh, Board of Registered Nursing is supposed to be working on that, and hopefully it's going to come out in January sometime. But we don't know that for sure, but it hopefully should be because it, um, the um, everything was approved, but it had to go through the Department of Consumer Affairs to be approved and through the uh, administrative law offices to be approved. So once they approve everything, then um, the attestation should come out, but it has to be um, a physician here in California and uh, you have to be in state. Okay, let me see. Um, okay, uh, John Phoenix, I'm an MP in Vegas and interested how I might be able to practice in California via telem telemedicine under this new rule. Um, would I qualify under 104 having been in clinical practice autonomously since 2013? Well, number one, 104 isn't coming into effect until um, 2026. And to practice telemedicine in California, you would have to have a collaborating physician in California, um, and you would have to file, I don't know if you have an LLC or a corporation or what in Nevada, um, California only has professional uh, nursing corporations. They don't have professional LLCs. So you would have to register as a foreign corporation. And then you would have to have your supervising physician in California. Now, if you practiced under that supervising physician for three years and under standardized procedures, then you could apply, you could get an attestation signed and you would um, no longer have to have that. However, you would have to be working for a medical corporation. You couldn't do it under a nursing corporation. You would have to be working for a medical uh, corporation as an employee, a facility, a medical group, something like that. So um, you, and in California, nursing corporations can't, just work as nursing corporations. You have to be providing services for the collaborating physician as your nursing corporation. You can't just go out there and get a nursing corporation and a collaborating physician. That doesn't work in California. So um, the only way, John, that you could practice in California is one of two ways, being a medical corporation or having a nursing corporation, and then that nursing corporation provides services for a physician. And then you could practice in California. And of course, you would have a California license. Um, let's see here. Okay, uh, Brittany Lute, 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 I hope that's how you pronounce it. She's a MP from uh, a psych MP from Ohio, and she's trying to start her own practice in Orange County. First of all, before you do anything, you have to find that collaborating supervising physician. And you won't be able to practice on a 103 because you just moved here from Ohio. So you're going to have to have a supervising physician and standardized procedures for three years before you can 
apply for an attestation uh, from the California Board of Registered Nursing. So um, you, you can have your own nursing corporation, but that would have to be providing services at a different location for a um, supervising physician here in California. And then um, you would keep track of those three years with that supervising physician. And then hopefully in uh, 2026, there'll be full practice, but you still won't have enough years um, of practice as an MP. It is going to be anywhere from four to six years, depending if you have a DMP and what your DMP is in and those kinds of things. So um, that's the only way you can kind of have your semi-owned practice in California. Okay, let's see here. Okay, um, Alicia um, Woods, who I know, uh, she has a practice rooted psychiatry and wellness in Los Angeles. She provides services for a physician. And so as such, um, uh, she can practice legally in California. And she would have to get, again, the attestation signed by the physician saying that she practiced under him for three years and that her nursing corporation is providing services for that physician at another location. Mm -hmm. Yes, Barbara. Melanie, let me just get a little clarification here. When you're saying three years, is this three years full-time, part-time? Is it just the dates? Are they looking for the amount of hours? They're saying 4,600 4, hours or three okay. full years. So okay. if you've worked off and on and you could have multiple physicians, you would have to account for those hours and they would have to sign something. It's similar to what happened to me. I've been a nurse practitioner since God invented the earth. And when furnishing came in, I had to have a physician uh, at the clinic sign for me to get my furnishing number because they didn't do that when I was in school. So I had to have a physician state from the clinic I was working in that I had put in the number of hours for the furnishing number in order to get it and that they were consecutive hours. Um, so you would have to do the same thing. They're saying 4,600 hours. So you really need to keep track unless if you've been an MP for five, six, seven, eight years, I mean, and that would be also, you know, registered with a board of registered nursing. They obviously know that you've been practicing a long time and they're not going to count the hours. But if you haven't been, if you've been working as an RN and then you just work part-time as an MP, then you are going to have to substantiate the hours and the physician will have to sign for those hours. Does that answer it, Barb? Yes. Yes. I just wanted to get some clarification. And for all of you that are putting your questions in the chat box, please put them in the Q&A because it's easier for us to see. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Gab Gabrielle Sh Schwilk, I hope I'm <laughs> not murdering your name. Um, has a question. I'm purchasing a practice, need to start my own co corp currently, believe I still needed MD for those thoughts. Yes, uh, I don't know if you're, uh, you know, what kind of practice you're purchasing. If you are uh, purchasing a medical corporation, then you're still going to need a physician to be 51% owner of that medical corporation. And what you can do in California to keep things as controlled as possible by the MP is you can also form a management corporation. And so what happens with that is that the physician basically, you know, has the patients, but the management does the leasing of the office. It provides a support staff. The physicians and MPs or RNs would be under the med corps, but you have all the support staff, you buy the supplies except for any prescriptive supplies. So that way you have a lot of control over the medical corporation. And if you ever want to sell in the future, it's the management company that's going to be, you know, worth a lot of money. And a lot of investors will come into California and they want to get involved in the medical business, but they're not, you know, a physician or PA or MP or RN. So what they do is they come in and um, 
they invest in the management company and then have a physician take the medical corporation and pay the physician a salary and that kind of thing. But, um, uh, you know, I don't know what kind of practice you're purchasing. So, you know, but hopefully it's a medical practice. That's the easiest way to go right now. But if it's a nursing uh, practice, then you need to make sure, again, that you're providing services for a physician. Now, there are a lot of um, MPs out there that aren't doing it correctly, I have to tell you. And it only takes one complaint. And the Board of Nursing practically goes back to the the day you're born to try and find anything wrong, you know, with what you're doing. So um, that's why you have to be careful. Also, you need to be very careful of these companies that provide collaborating physicians because they all say they have attorneys, which they do, but they're not specific attorneys to that state. So the problem I have run into is I have them, uh, the, the worst case I saw was a nurse practitioner that lost $9,000. And they, she couldn't sue them because they were located in the Midwest. So, you know, one thing you're looking at contracts, you always want your venue in California because if it's in the Midwest or the back East, then to sue them, you have to go to those states, which gets very expensive. And they kept providing or collaborating physicians that were out of state but licensed in California, and they kept saying that's okay. It's not okay. The BRN and the medical board will not go along with that in California. And then the other thing is that, again, um, they don't explain to the physicians that if it's a, a nursing corporation, that that uh, corporation has to be providing services for the physician at a different location, or if it's a medical corporation, then the physician has to be 51% owner. So please be very, 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 very careful of all these collaborative services they're offering because they're they're making a ton of money on it. They have no liability and they don't care a whit about what happens to you. So I cannot stress how careful you need to be in all this stuff. Uh, and Amy Adkins is looking to set up a new practice. Well, Amy, again, it depends. Do you want medical? Do you want a nursing corp? And it has to be, like I said, if it's medical, it's 5149, but you can set it up in such a way that the physician can't, you know, you have to go along with any decision that's made. That would be in the shareholders agreement. And then if you set up a separate management company, then you have a lot of control of everything. And you can pay the management company to 60 to 70% of the gross because in a regular practice, it's, except for a psych practice, it's 50% or higher um, uh, your costs and everything like that. So you need to decide, you know, you know what you want to do and is it a family practice and the more invasive procedures you do, because I know a lot of you out there are starting these IV hydration practices and you need to be very careful with them because, um, again, I am seeing that uh, even RNs are doing it and they're doing assessments and RNs cannot do medical assessments. And so if you have an IV hydration, I recommend if you're going to do a lot of that, a med corp is better and you need to do a physical assessment on the patient. You can't just order all these IVs, even though a lot of them... Um, you know, contain vitamins and stuff like that, you really need to assess the patient. So Amy, you know, I would be happy if you wanted to contact me um, to talk to me about what kind of, you know, practice you want to set up. I'd be glad to give you any advice on that. Okay, let me see. Okay, and Carol is self, uh, Carol Rosemond is self-employed. She has a, a Corporation set up by me that works quite well. Um, see. Okay. Oh boy. Sue Lavelle in Santa Cruz. You have an MP with your own practice and it's called Lifestyle Medicine. You have the word medicine in there. So hopefully you are a medical practice because if you are not, you are going to be slammed. Um, you can only use the word medicine if you are in a medical corporation. 
you cannot use it in a nursing corporation. And also in a nursing corporation, you have to have after that, you have to either have nursing in the name or afterwards a professional nursing corporation in every place that you plan to advertise or anything like that. And um, you can put it, you know, in smaller print or something like that underneath, but it ha we're the only board that requires that. No other board has to say what profession it is, but that is required. So hopefully, Sue, you are a medical corporation um, with the word medicine in it. Okay. Um, see, we go down further. What can a 103 MP do that an MP without that classification can't? Basically, they can do without standardized procedures and collaborating physician. Uh, they can, if you are in a hospital, you can be on the different uh, committees, um, you know, under, you know, the same ones that the physicians are under, that kind of thing. Um, but that's basically, you know, what the difference is. You don't have to have your standardized procedures and a collaborating physician. And again, you would have to have the attestation. So that's that's kind of what's different um, with a 103 MP. Huh, can you tell us from the beginning what we need to do? <laughs> Not sure what you mean from the beginning. If you're talking about the 103, 104, what you need to do is if you've had three years of supervision um, under a physician, then what you need to, and you're working for either a medical facility, a clinic, or a medical corporation, then what you need to do is wait for the attestation to come out. Once the attestation, attestation is signed, you turn it into whoever you're working with, and then you can do without the standardized procedures of collaborating physician. Now, this also affects the four to one ratio, because if you're working for a MedCorp facility clinic, then that four, you don't need the uh, standardized procedures of collaborating physician. So then you don't have that four to one ratio. So that also works for that. Now, there are MPs out there that uh, went to programs where or decided not to get a national certification. To get a national certification now, you will probably have to go back to school. So can you continue to practice as a nurse practitioner if you don't have national certification? Yes, you can. However, you have to practice with under standardized procedures and a supervising physician, but you can continue to practice. It's just um, you can't ever hope for full practice until you get a national certification. Okay. January 2023 20, for that attestation. It's not out. You're just going to have to keep looking at the BRN site. I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. They keep saying it's going to happen in January, but you know, you can't promise it, unfortunately. What if I have more than 20 years practice and in good standing? Well, if you do and you're nationally certified, uh, then you should be able to get your attestation signed by a physician and be a 103. And then in another three years, if everything stays the same, you should be able to practice uh, full practice in another three years. Again, I'm they, you'll probably have to have another attestation or something like that signed. Does do volunteering count for hours of supervision in low-income clinics? As long as you're being supervised, as long as the physician will say that he signed it and that you saw patients and you, uh, you know, uh, did examinations, treatment, et cetera, et cetera, as long as you've done that, then 
Yes, it should count. Do I, uh, Ramona Smith, do I understand the years of supervision can be retroactive? I started in 2006. Yeah, it's not even retroactive. They're just saying three years for 4,600 hours. So as long as you can get a physician to say, yeah, I, I've supervised her for three years, or maybe you've been under, I don't know, several physicians. So you get a physician to say, I've supervised her for two years. I've supervised her for two years. Then you should still be fine because you still have that total of three years. This recording be available, I assume so, Barbara. What is the definition of group practice with a supervising physician? Well, it would be a uh, a medical group. It would be something that's licensed at that, like a medical group or a clinic, a nonprofit or for profit clinic. Anything that has a medical designation and license would be considered group or you know that kind of thing. Can we re review the rule? Do you mean, the? I'm not sure what you mean. If you, you can go online and get, and if you belong to the California Association for Nurse Practitioners, they, um, they have a whole um, uh, sheet that you can get on AB 890 implementation. Uh, and you can just go on the CAMP website and get that. Otherwise you can, you can go to the actual uh, law and statutes and, and read them, which are, that's a lot of fun. Um, but you can do that. But the CMP website is really good about it. Okay, anonymous, if I work in a specific specialty, you know, like cardiology, and I apply for 103 and later change specialty for GI, does that, uh, it shouldn't, because you're, what you're applying under is your certification. And obviously, we all know that, um, you know, there aren't certifications for GI and cardiology and all of that. So it can come under family practice or acute care. And, you know, as long as you've got your certification under that, you should be able to change from cardiology, urology to GI. But what you do need to do is you need to keep a record of all the training you had under that whether it be under a physician and courses and all of that. And if you keep all of that, then you should, um, shouldn't have a problem, but you need to, you know, show, be able to demonstrate that you were trained in those specialty areas. Okay, Lynn coates Leeson, I've been su supervised with my prior employer for six years in California. Yes, he can sign me uh, attestation. Um, it doesn't matter. It could be, you know, previous years, whatever, as long as you've been supervised three years. So, yes, you can go back to him and he can state I, he supervised you from this date to that date. I assume that's what's going to be on the attestation. Now, also, the attestation will not be for free. I don't know how much the board's going to charge, but obviously they're going to make money from this. Sue Lavelle, could you just briefly summarize what B 890 does, the main points? Again, the main points are that it allows you working for a medical group, facility, clinic, medical corporation to do without standardized procedures and without the collaborating physician. It also, if you work in a hospital, it also allows you to be on the different hospital medical committees and those kinds of things. I've gotten questioned, will it allow me to admit to the hospital? That's up to the hospital because um, there's certain things that the hospital's, you know, going to determine whether they want or not. However, and I've had uh, some questions, you know, that the hospital says they're not going to allow this and blah, blah, blah. Well, you can go forward and say, this is the state law. Can they force, um, can they be forced to put you on a committee? Not really. Uh, but you have the ability to do so. And I think most uh, facilities are seeing the writing on the wall and seeing that, you know, nurse practitioners are becoming more involved so that, um, you know, I would think that more and more are, are going to be allowing that. But that's kind of basically, you know, what it does. Okay, 
Uchichi Nazwo Aroha, I'm sure I murdered your name, would be, be able to, in, to independently open a telemedicine platform as an MP with plus five plus years experience. Well, not right now, no. But hopefully in 2026, by then you'll have eight years experience. So they're only requiring a maximum of six years experience. So by then you should be able to do that. Now, whether they're going to put some some other um, specifications on it, I can't predict that. But right now, I would say based on what the BRN is saying that, yes, you know, you should be able to. Fiji Simmons. So does a collaborative physician need to own a percentage of the nursing corp? No. Hmm. As long as you are providing the contract reach of providing services for that physician at a different location, then um, you can own 100% of your nursing corp. Now, you are going to run into a lot of attorneys that say, oh, this is baloney. You don't need to do it that way. However, the problem is usually most attorneys are either corporate attorney, business attorneys, or they work in administ law administration, or they work in malpractice. Um, and I'm strange because my whole for focus has been nurse practitioners for all these years because I'm a nurse practitioner. So I um, represent MPs before the um, Board of Registered Nursing, as well as set up um, their businesses. And I have learned to set up their businesses to make the nursing board and the medical board happy because the the nursing board is such that uh, their argument, like you can follow their guidelines and you get in trouble for something. A patient is upset and patients get upset for really unbelievable reasons. And so you tell the board in your defense, well, I followed all the guidelines. Well, what the board of nursing can reply is these are guidelines, they're not regulations. So because they're guidelines, we don't have to follow them. So bottom line, I know how the nursing board thinks. And our, our board of nursing thinks more differently than any other board I've ever been uh, accustomed to. And I I do, um, ha I'm licensed to practice in Arizona, so I'm well aware of their board. And believe me, it's much easier in Arizona than it is here by far. What's the major difference between a 103 and a 104 MP? Well, the 103 cannot practice independently in full practice, and the 104 MP will be able to practice um, with more years of experience. Um, they'll be able to have their own practice. So in other words, a nursing corp for a 104 MP will be independent and be able to see patients on their own and without a physician. Because you have to realize now, too, the patients don't belong to the nurse practitioner. The patients belong to the supervising physician. So that will change with a 104. But then what also has to change is that the insurance companies will pay the 104 nurse practitioners directly. Some will now, but a lot won't. And that's another reason in looking at whether you want to be a medical corp or a nursing corp. A lot of insurances will not pay a nursing corp directly, whereas a medical corp, a lot of insurances will pay a medical corp directly. And well, all of them will. So um, that's that's a bit of a difference there. Okay. Um, uh, Mariana Shinoda, I've been working in a clinic as an FMP for the last three plus years. I'm now wanting to open up my own clinic as a professional corporation. Can a 103 become the PC fee per patient on any given insurance? <laughs> no, a lot of insurance won't accept you as that. And so they won't pay you. So the only way they're going to pay you is if you're a medical corporation. Now, what's happened too is a lot of MPs are going into just fee for service. And so sometimes they can get paid by that with a nursing corporation. But most insurances will not pay nursing corporations. They'll only pay medical corporations. So if you really plan on using a lot of insurance companies, I would recommend that you do a medical corporation. And then the medical corporation gets their own MPI and you bill through that. 
So you don't have the incident two problem as much either and some of those things. So again, that's why medical corp is a little bit easier in California. And the more you do in your corporation, the more you're going to become scrutinized under the medical board and the board of registered nursing. And if you're ever advertising under your nursing corp, like I said, it has to say a professional corp. And you always want to put in your webpage that you're part of a team. And that physician is your supervising physician, physician and a team member, because that tells the Department of Consumer Affairs immediately that you are practicing, you know, under a physician. Uh, because the Department of Consumer, Consumer Affairs hires people just to look at websites to see what's on the website. And, and if it looks like you're just there by yourself, um, a complaint can filed, can be filed against you. So you need to be careful on how you advertise. Okay, LaWanda Smith, when a psych MP practice under a nursing court providing service for, yes, it has to be psychiatrist. Um, the boards will not go along with you doing psych medicine under family medicine or anything like that. And in fact, as a FMP, you have to be careful in how much psych you do also because you can only do like mild depressions and stuff like that. As an FMP, you cannot um, do uh, like schizophrenia or bipolar disease or anything like that. You need to get your psych um, MP if you're going to do that. So, uh, so yes, you must have a psychiatrist. Uh, Chirag Patel, I'm purchasing a clinic from MD in Fresno, practicing as an MP for six years. Three questions. Is it hard to establish a contract with insurance? Um, not necessarily. You know, you would be doing it under, since it's a, I'm assuming it's a medical corporation. So um, it usually takes anywhere uh, from, 180 days to six months. Private insurances take less, I have found, than like um, uh, Medi-Cal takes the longest, takes forever, and Medicare is okay. But again, if you get established under a medical corp, then you get the what physicians get paid instead of your 85%. So that's that's just, you know, bringing more money in. Uh, it's not hard. You you might want to go through a credentialing company and you need to, you know, people have asked me if I do credentialing. I don't because I would have to charge you a ton of money if I did. And there's companies that do nothing but that. Some of the MP credentialing companies I find are um, a little bit more honest than some of the other ones. So I would, if it were me, I would go through a credentialing company. Um, is it true that Blue Cross are not willing to contract with MPs? It varies whether you're in Northern California, Southern California. Um, a lot of insurance companies won't contract with MPs. That's why you contract with your medical corporation and you get paid through your corporation. What is the pay, uh, percentage pair out compared to the MD? Um, you know, some insurance companies will pay the MP 100%. Some will follow the 85% rule of Medicare and Medi-Cal. And that's why it's always better to bill under the medical corporation because then you get 100%. So hopefully that's answered your questions. Derek Dew, I'm confused about what's available for independent practice this year and what's available in 2026. I've been practicing as an MP for over 10 years in California. Well, you can't do anything independently until 2026, bottom line. As I explained, 103 gives you, you can practice without standardized procedures, without the collaborating physician, and you can be on hospital committees, medical committees, but you can't practice independently until full practice in 2026. Anna Popica Log. An MP for 21 years, DMP with psych, plan to work with Grow and will pay 600 months to have a collaborating physician until we get clarification. Grow and P will, blah, 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 blah. okay, if you're, well, it depends, are you doing this as a nursing corporation? If you are, then you need to be providing services for that collaborating physician at a different location. If you're getting him for $6.00 a month, you're getting a bargain. Um, and um, you can have, like I said, your own nursing corporation 
providing services for that physician. If you plan to really grow and grow and grow, I would recommend a medical corporation because again, the bigger you get, the more scrutiny. So, and if you're doing all tele telesite, then you just need to be make sure you're licensed in other states and that you're, um, you know, if you're doing in states where, you know, you can have independent practice, you need to register as a foreign corporation in those states also, because every state wants their own due money. So those are the things that you need to do. And if you're a nursing corp, you can obviously do telehealth in, in independent states, but you would have to, again, file as a uh, foreign nursing corp. Michelle Abernoff, does the physician collaborating physician have to be in the same specialty as you are? Yes, it does. Uh, that's a must under the um, medical board and nursing board. Robin Chapman Bowles, the organization that I work for may restrict MBs from signing our attestation. Ah, oh, geez. As they want to maintain SPs, what are our options? Well, you can try and fight it with a law. I mean, you can hire an attorney to write a letter to them stating that they are, um, you know, that they're disobeying the law and see if that holds any water. You know, I've done some of that myself with, um, uh, when we had trouble with midwives and stuff, some of the uh, hospitals still wanted a, uh, a physician in the hospital and that kind of thing. So I wrote a letter citing all the laws and saying, you know, a physician didn't have to be present and blah, 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 blah. And finally they gave in. So you can hire an attorney to maybe write a letter on your behalf saying that, you know, this is the law now. And so um, it's, it could go further than that too. It's a restriction of trade and yeah, you could do a lot of threatening to them. Um, that's, that's horrible. It's nasty, but. Okay, Eric Meyer, even if the hours are met and the attestation is signed, we cannot, yep, you can't obtain independence until 2006. And like I said, then you're going to have to have something else signed, I'm sure, to state that you've been practicing six years or you have your DMP and um, I, there's a, they want to know what your DMP, whether you did research or was it clinical, because if it's clinical, then it counts. If it's not clinical, then it doesn't count. So you've got to go through all that for 2026. Denise Hoover, FMPs that work outside of my family medicine have worked in OBGYN for 27 years. Do I have to have a family medical doctor that knows my practice attest my 103 app or can it be an OBGYN? Well, if your family practice, then it should be a family practice physician. If you're OBGYN, then it's an OBGYN. Um, and in family medicine, actually, uh, in family medicine, you can deliver babies. So in all actuality, if he's been working in OBGYN, then he could sign as a supervising physician since family practice can still deliver babies and do OBGYN. As long as he's been practicing in that area, you should be okay. Okay, and again, do I still need the extra few years of paid collaborator? Yeah, you, you, um, you don't necessarily, it doesn't have to be a paid collaborator. You know, when I got my furnishing license, uh, my collaborator wasn't paid to be my collaborating physician. It just has to be a physician that you worked under. So it can be any three years um, since you've been working since 2015. Michelle Assa, would you please explain the new law? <laughs> what was it in the end? Again, um, I would recommend that you go to CAMP and, and to their site, which, um, you know, for me to go through the whole law would take forever. Um, so, but bottom line, as I said, uh, as a 103, if you've been supervised for three years and the physician will sign the attestation, you can work for uh, as an employee for a medical corp, a facility, a clinic, 
a hospital without standardized procedures, without a collaborating physician, um, and you can serve on uh, medical uh, committees and that kind of thing. Um, and um, that's basically what you can do under that. Um, you know, the specific ca questions are kind of easier to answer, um, but, you know, again, if you if you want to go to a whole summarization, because reading the law is a, is is not user friendly, and CMP has done a great job on um, answering questions. Can uh, Dr. Jacqueline and Gregory can I open a nursing corp as a seasoned CMP with me owning? I don't know why you'd want to have a nursing corp with a physician owning anything. You can open a nursing corp owning 100% and you can have the physician owning a percentage if you want, but um, you would still, um, as a nursing corp, you still have to be providing um, services for that. Your nursing corp with a part physician owner would have to be providing services for that physician. It doesn't get you out of that. Gabrielle Schwung, yes, medical court, thanks. Okay. Rebecca Goldfader, I worked as an employed MP at a large medical group. When I realized it's the organization's choice to continue with SPs for all employed MPs while working as an employee, can the medical group decide to not allow their physicians to? No, they can't. Legally, they can't do that, but you have to get together as a group, as MPs and say, hey, this is against the law. You cannot prevent, because, I mean, they can threaten um, the um, physician also. But bottom line, you know, it's an employing thing. And if you knew, need a good employment attorney, I know an excellent employment attorney who would be glad to, um, you know, contact them and, and argue the law with them because they can't do that. It's discrimination. It's not obeying the law. Um, it's um, restriction of trade. It's a, it's a bunch of stuff. So uh, you just need to get the right attorney and you need to get MPs that'll sign on with that and even see if the physicians will sign on that too, because they, they legally can't tell the physician he can or cannot sign that. I mean, they don't have that kind of control over physicians, although they could say, you know, we're going to fire you, but they can't do that. That's all illegal. And you get a good attorney and, and they can they can kill that immediately. Jonathan Lowe, Psych DMP. Why is this bill so awful for APRNs compared to the independent? Like, is there anything that can be done? All right. Here's the situation. And I've learned this mainly, I've worked with the National Council State Boards of Nursing. All states that have gotten independent practice have had the support of the unions. We don't in California. The Medical Association has been against it in all states. I mean, the doctors are fighting for their license. So they've always been against it and they have a lot of money. But what has happened in California is that there are two main nursing unions, California Nurses Association, which is the very largest one, and the SEICU, which is a smaller one. Now, the SEICU went ahead and voted with AB90, has always voted in favor of us getting full practice. The CNA, up until AB890, has always um, fought against it with AB890. They just abstained. They didn't support it, but they abstained. Well, having abstaining is the same thing as saying no, just about, because they're not supporting us. So California is a union state, period. The unions, if, if the unions want something, that's the way it goes. That's how strong the unions are in California. So the CNA is abstaining. They won't support us. If they supported us, we'd be through in a heartbeat because they have so much money. And the unions in California, CNA went on it. Then this, what is it, SAG, the, for the movie stars and all the, and the Teamsters, all the unions would be supporting us and telling their legislators, vote for this, vote for this, vote for this. And they would, but we don't have the union support. 
So we're fighting this on our own and it's it's just been a horrible battle. So, you know, what I've tried to encourage is that like a lot of the hospitals obviously are union and to have the MPs try to, um, you know, uh, talk to the union members. And you have to realize too, the Board of Registered Nursing in California is made up of all union people. <laughs> there isn't an independent on the Board of Registered Nursing. And um, so they're all they're all in it together and they're anti-MPs basically. Um, because why does a union anti-MP? Several reasons. One, majority of MPs don't belong to unions. Two, um, the unions um, can have nurses like, oh, I don't know, it's about maybe 10 years ago even, where Kaiser and a lot of the HMOs fired a bunch of MPs and PAs. Because what they're able to do is hire the RNs on and under standardized procedures, they can have RNs doing the same things that MPs can do. So the RNs are making more money, which makes the union happy, but they're making less money, you know, than MPs and they're not, the hospitals aren't having to pay the MPs. So, um, and nobody wants to bring, it's the elephant in the room. Nobody wants to bring this up because everybody's afraid of the unions because they have such control in California. So bottom line, that's been our, at least, you know, like I said, I was told by the National Council um, of Nursing that uh, every state that's gotten full practice has had total support of the unions and we don't in California. And so I think that's been a problem all along, but I don't know how we're ever going to solve that. So that that's a scuttle, but I mean, I'm sure if you talk to some unions and stuff, they would totally deny everything I said. So who knows? I mean, they could burn me at the stake for that, but I'm just seeing saying what I've seen. And I have been in California practice as an MP since the 90s um, and have been very, very, I was president of CAMP at one time. So I've been very involved with the organization for many years. And this is just what I've seen over the, the years. The best BRN we had was under Schwarzenegger of all people, um, but he wasn't union. So we had three DMPs on the board at that time. And we were really moving in the right direction. And then, of course, when Schwarzenegger went out, we got brown and we all went backwards. So that's kind of what happened. Uh, Susan Buck, sounds unlikely California will be joining. Oh, California, I don't think 99% sure they will join any compact ever. We So far, we haven't joined the RN compact. So why on earth would we join the APRN compact? California has the view that we know we know more than what anybody else does. And like I was telling Barbara earlier, people that are trying to get their license in California are going through hell because the uh, Board of Register of Nursing is saying you're you're minus a we you need one more credit in microbiology or you need a credit in chemistry, stuff like that, getting people that are nationally certified you know, past the NCLEX, all that kinds of stuff. This is what California is doing. So California BRN is above and better than any other BRN in the total United States. Um, Andrea um, Beek, thanks for doing your webinar. You're quite welcome. What are the advantages of lack of standardized procedures um, in a group practice? Is liability insurance going to go up? Um, for MPs practicing without standardized physique. Here, well, several answers. Um, well, the nice thing is that, you know, as things change in medicine, you can change without having to go to your standardized procedures and saying, okay, we added this, we subtracted this, this is our, um, you know, reference for this. So it's just going to be uh, you know a lot less troublesome or we added this drug on or this drug is um you know not fda approved but you know it's supported in the practice so you're not going to have to keep changing things liability insurance is going to go up no matter what because a law was passed and malpractice insurance it's going up a percentage certain percentage every year for five years in California. So is your malpractice insurance going to go up? You betcha. I don't know that it's necessarily um, 
you know, due to the practice of MPs, although the, the only insurance company that I know that keeps track of this is Nurses Service Organization. And they said that um, the malpractice cases are going up. But again, as nurse practitioners do more and more, obviously there's more liability. So it's going to go up. But I think our malpractice insurance is going to go up. It's probably going to double or more uh, would be my prediction. Okay, Michelle Avernot again. Can you work under an MSO such as hydrate for your medical director? No, you have to have your medical corp. Your medical corp can have a uh, managed care organization, but you need to be under a, directly a medical uh, thing. Um, and Mariana Shinoda, what do you mean that a nursing professional corporation needs to be providing, providing services? physician. So we still have to have the physician as part of the corporation and say that it's supporting him. Yeah. In other words, your nursing court, you, these patients aren't yours. None of the patients in California are the MPs. They're the physicians. Okay. So your, your patients in your nursing corporation are basically the physician's patients. So you have to be providing these services for the physician's patients at a different location. And in a medical corp, they're all the medical corporation's patients, so you don't have that same problem. Shamika Mitchell, Melanie, when do you think commercial insurance is uh, without a collaborating? I am hoping that uh, commercial insurances will um, smell the roses and know that MPs are, uh, you know, going to be the wave of the future and and do it by 2026. I don't know. I started, it had to be the late 90s, early 2020s. Uh, Susie Phillips, um, another nurse practitioner uh, in California, and I went around to insurance companies asking them why they wouldn't pay MPs directly. And we had a PowerPoint and everything. And they, and we said, there's no law that says you have to, um, you can't pay us directly. And their response was, there's no law that says we have to. So hopefully they'll see the writing on the wall and we're not going to get a lot more obstacles before 2026 and 2026, they'll hopefully go along with it. I can only hope. Um, notion that collab collaborating physician must be in California. Absolutely. Anybody tells you that they can be in another state they're, they don't know what they're talking about. They've never worked with the boards in California. Ramona Smith in 2026 with the Board of Nursing accept attestation. What will be the benefits to the individual MP? It seems like it's getting more difficult to practice. Well, hopefully in 2026, you can go out and practice on your own, have your own patients, do your own billing, and be able to practice independently without a physician. Now, they are going to require that you have um, a physician that you can refer to and that quite uh, that kind of thing. And it basically will be a protocol that any practice has um, that, you know, you have this physician you can refer, refer to if there's a problem. And Leeling, we're talking about a practice in California. Yes, only in California, not Virginia, not any other state. California is its own. It's totally, completely Absolutely different than any other state. Uh, Alicia Woods, I've practiced in California under SPs for four years. In 2026, will I be able to apply for? Um, no, you don't have to be a DMP uh, right now to apply for uh, a 104. You can uh, just have your master's in nursing, but you have to, you know, have the six years of practice. Uh, Lori Cranberry, does anything change now? If working institution, can I sign orders for therapy or home health services or still um, MD uh, signature required? Um, not so much procedurally, things will change. Um, so if they still require you um, to for therapy or home health services, although a lot of that has changed, but sometimes the institution will require it and then you, you still have to go by what they say is required. Uh, anonymous. Once a doctor signs the attestation with three years of experience, is that recognized? Okay, another three years will be required. 
for independent practice. So they'll probably have to sign something else in three years, and it could be a different doctor. Alicia Schroeder, is it possible today, regardless of 103, 104, to set up a family practice as a nursing corp with supervisor, but uh, physician, but 100% owned by a nursing corporation. I'm interested in setting this up and being credentialed with carriers. <laughs> well, your big problem, you probably won't be credentialed with the carriers. Uh, most carriers will pay MPs directly. And if you're setting up a total and complete family practice, I would not recommend trying to do it as a nursing corporation. I would recommend um, a medical corporation because again, you will have a much easier uh, job of getting credentialed and you'll be a lot more protected. Once you start growing as a nursing corporation, um, you you become, uh, you know, uh, more um, scrutinized. And the thing is, though, in, 10, in 2026, what you can do is if you have a medical corporation, all you have to do is demand it to a nursing corporation and you'll be fine in 2026. It's not, and then just change the documents to say you're a nursing corporation and you should be fine. So it's not going to be a big deal to change a medical corporation from a nurse to a nursing corporation. Anonymous again, once the doctor signs the test, no, he won't. Yeah, he'll be required um, to sign it again. Dominique. Um, yeah. Does a collaborative physician need to sign the attestation or can it be from the medical group? HR, HR can't sign it. You have to have it signed by a physician. That's it. Shanetta Hill, if you have a nursing corporation, work under a physician, not under your nursing co. Um, as long as you have a physician that says you've been supervised for 4,600 hours, that's it. Belinda Shea, I started my private telepsychiatry uh, practice January 2022, had a collaborating physician until 1231-2022. I'm a professional nursing corporation. I've been practicing MPBC since 2015. Have I put everything in place appropriately? Um well, I don't know uh, if you've been practicing as a psychiatric nurse practitioner since 2015 under a supervising physician, then you should have everything in place. And for your professional nursing corporation, it needs to state that it's providing um, psychiatric services and telehealth um, for this other, for this physician. Um, so it can't be independent. So you have to do that. Okay, Leeling, I have my clinic office and I have a physician agreement who has a license in Virginia but practices in another state. I don't even know what my business is, medical, and how can I figure it out? Wow. Uh, Leeling, I don't know if you're in California or not, but no matter what state you're in, you can go up on your Secretary of State site and look up your practice name to see if it's registered as an LLC or a corporation. Um, your physician should be practicing in the same state that you are, otherwise you are in trouble there. Uh, but yeah, you need to, you can go to the Secretary of State. I don't know, I, and if you were incorporated by an attorney, they would certainly know. And, and what do your documents say? You should have all kinds of doc. You should have the articles of incorporation or uh, articles of organization for an LLC. and you should have all the documents. So you need to go see what documents you have also. Anonymous, does a 103 need standardized procedures? No. Susan Buck would uh, like MPs practicing telling health and using health information tech to care for patients. No, they are welcome. Welcome to join AAMP Health Informatics and Telehealth Community and share knowledge with over 500 Ps. Um, I mean, I don't see any reason why they couldn't do it. And just remember in telehealth too, when you're practicing, you're not supposed to be practicing outside your home. So you need to have a medically zoned um, address for your telehealth practice because it's not legal to practice out of your home, even though people do it because you can't tell if you're at home or not. But you need to have um, a medically zoned area office for your telehealth practice. What counts as standardized procedures? 
that's a whole nother course. Um, the um, uh, I like a book by Rebecca Zettler called Process Protocols. I recommend it for all my uh, clients. It's a great standardized procedures book. You can get it online. And then the Board of Nursing also has uh, outline of standardized procedures. I don't like theirs because you have to put everything you do, whereas Rebecca uh, basically puts it into primary, secondary, tertiary care. So, and I think it's $30, but I like Rebecca's book. I've been making her money for years. Um, Lynn Coates, Lisa, if I'm looking to become a MedCorp, what is the reasonable about <laughs> to pay my medical collaborating physician? Uh, if he's a medical director of my nursing corp and I'm providing services for him, can I talk to him into becoming a medical corp for me? Does that MP get paid more? No, they don't get paid more. Anywhere from 500 to 1500 is reasonable. It depends how well you know your physician. But if they're, they want more than 1500 you need to find another physician because they're basically getting paid for nothing. But um, yeah, I would I would definitely talk to the physician. You'd be probably better off as a med corp and if he's doing that now and actually you know if your nursing corp is providing services for him you're under him as a as a medical director anyhow but th those are the average prices as I'm seeing so uh Jacinta so the 103 MPs are those who have practiced for three years in California not outside correct you don't get credit for practicing outside Christy King what sort of cost <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Right now, I pay more to the BRN for my licensures every two years than I pay for the bar every three years. So I would imagine it will be $100, maybe $150. I mean, they seem to get a lot of money. Uh, Stephanie Tominick, so with at least 4,600 hours of practice, you would still have to have a physician partner who owns 51% of a medical corp. I, you can't open a clinic on your own. No, you cannot. So you, I, like I said, the two ways, medical corp or nursing corp providing services for physician. Farnoosh, uh, so after testation in three years in 2026, can you practice independently? They're saying, yes, you can. I won't count anything in until it's in place though. Alina Miller, I've been with a CP from Santa Rosa through Collaborating Docs since 2021 and accepted a position with a VA in Monterey starting in March this year. I'm an AAMP. Will I still need the CP from Collaborating Docs or could I use my super? You can't use your supervising. Oh, from the VA. Oh, okay. Um, VA is also Virginia. Um if you are accepting a physician with a VA, then you can practice independently because under the VA law, which is a federal law, you can practice independently. So you need to look at your contract and whatever, but under VA law, you can practice independently. You don't need a collaborating physician. Uh, Uchechi again. So technically we do not have full practice and need a collaborating MD to open. Yes, you need that. Belinda Deshev, are you saying that even if I've worked all the hours and been supervised by a psychiatrist since 2015, can I just sign the N the N uh, 104 attestation and be independent? It isn't available. It's not going to be available to 2026. And yes, it will have to be signed by a physician again. So no, you can't be independent. Anonymous, if I get a 103 as soon as attestation is available and then get a DMP within a year, should I be able to to 104 immediately as graduation with a DMP. Um, it depends what your focus is as a DMP. If it's clinical, then you can use those years as part of the three years that's required. And they're saying that they're only gonna require two years from a DMP. However, it has to be in clinical, can't be in research or anything, any of that. So you have to do that. Um, I may have missed this yet. When will the attestation forms be available and from where? I From the BRN, I don't know when. Carrie Ann Clark, I'm a master's FMP. I'm a medical director with an orthopedic surgeon link. Oh my gosh, for my aesthetics practice. Ooh, come 2026, am I able to open my own practice with her supervising hours? Well, let's hope that your orthopedic has all kinds of 
uh, credentials and uh, everything uh, under aesthetics. Because if she doesn't, you need to sign her up for aesthetic classes because she doesn't count. Um, but you should be able to, she's uh, under aesthetics and everything, and that's what you're doing. And you're an FMP, then you should be able to um, have your own practice actually in 2026. Judy Candia. Okay. Uh, Gladden. I worked under Nursing Corpus FMP since 2011, supervising, if I get an attestation, do I need a supervising physician to practice? Well, the problem is, is you're still providing services for the physician. Um, so, And you're not actually, you're an independent contract. You're not an employee. And by the law, you have to be an employee. So if you're an independent contractor, you're still going to need the supervising physician. Dr. Jacqueline Gregory, uh, can I open a nursing corp in California as a seasoned CMP with me owning 51% and the MD owning 49%? And can the MD also be my collaborating physician in the, in the nursing corp? Yeah, but I don't know where that gets you because you still have to be providing services as a nursing corp for that physician. So why would you want him to own 49% of your nursing corp? That doesn't make sense because you're still, it's a nursing corp, it's not a medical corp. So you're still gonna have to be providing services for that physician in his practice. Lorenza Val Divias, if the organization I work for does not honor the ANP 103 and require standardized procedures, will I still be able to apply for the 104 in three years? Yes, you can, as long as you continue to get the supervision. But I would certainly, um, again, try and have an attorney write them a letter and saying what they're doing against the law. Carol Roseman, I'll be a 104. Will I be able to use the forms coming out soon to get attestations now? Yes, you will for 103. Some of my previous physicians aren't getting any younger. Yeah, I can understand. Um, but you'll only be able to get it for the 103 right now, not the 104. Anonymous in California with AB 890. Is certification now mandated or only if you're practicing independent? No, for AB 890, if you want to practice under AB 90, you need national certification. Anonymous, is there a problem with the name of Trinity? Yes, nursing medical clinic. Absolutely. <laughs> as nursing, you cannot have a medical clinic. Uh, operating as an FMP for the last three years and just opened up clinic. Yes, you'll need a, a collaborating physician at, if you're practicing uh, nursing, because as I said, you're going to have to be providing those services for a physician and you're going to have to take the word medical out of it. Um, Rebecca Goldfader, if a certified FMP is working in a specialty area such as women's health, do they need a family medicine or primary care MD to sign their FMTation um, or can an OBGYN sign it? Um, yeah, OBG, if you're working um, in women's health, they should be able to sign it since that's what you're doing. Can a DO sign your attestation? Certainly. Where is the attest? I don't know where the attestation forms are. Uh, professional LLC. I don't know who told you a professional LLC in California. There is no such thing as a professional LLC in California. There is no such thing. So you are confused. Um, if your name is medical, you need to be a medical corporation. Um, you should not have an LLC. Uh, you probably, I don't know what you have. But you don't have a professional LLC. The only professional uh, in California are medical and nursing and chiropractic and, you know, all those kinds of. But um, I I have no idea what you're doing, but it doesn't sound like you did it right. Eric my Mayer, as an MP with a law degree, do you have an opinion as to why this law was written this way and why our board is so? Yeah, yeah. My opinion is this was the only way we could get the law voted on. We had so much input. I mean, we have stuff in the law that's ridiculous. Like if you have a Spanish speaking patient, you have to learn how to say in Spanish that you are a nurse practitioner and not a physician. If you're Chinese, if you're from Thailand or Japan 
or any other country, you don't have to tell them that. Only if they're Hispanic. That makes no law. That makes no sense to me. Either you do it to everybody or, you know, but this is part of the law. It's, it's, it's our board of nursing and they are not familiar with MPs. Uh, you know, um, I, I don't know. Again, again, I think it's the influence of the unions and they, they just, um, they're gods. They want to be gods. Um, they don't care about us succeeding in business. That's, they don't care. I mean, they still think, you know, we're handmaidens of the physician. So they don't care about us. And the thing that upsets me is they don't care about all the good people they're turning away to provide care. And we're going to need more and more nurses and nurse practitioners in California because we have a growing population of people that are underserved and who's going to provide care for them. Anna Hines, I'm a little unclear on all the aesthetics areas like Botox, IV hydration. If I've attended training for these things, but my specialty or women's health, family practice, can I still practice independently in doing aesthetic procedures? Well, no, you can't now, but uh, aesthetics and all of that is a separate specialty. What you need is you need to be able to show that you took courses in that that you were supervised in it and all of that so that if you ever get investigated, you can show all that. And they do have, um, there's no nationally recognized certification, but there are several certifications out there. And actually anybody, uh, just about anybody uh, except psych can, can do um, aesthetics. So um, pediatrics is a little shaky because you don't usually do aesthetics on kids, but any of the other areas, um, there's no reason why you can't take courses in aesthetics and IV hydration. Um, again, you would need protocols and everything for that. But again, it, as a nurse, you can start IVs. As an MP, you can order them. So um, you just have to make sure that you keep uh, a record of how you've learned and who you practice on and that kind of thing. Regina Harrison. Um, for clarity, the MD signs the attestation can be someone you worked with 10 years ago, as long as you work with him for, I think so. I can't swear to anything yet because I haven't seen the attestation. You know, if you have somebody that's, that's, that's closer to the time limit, that would be better because then they'll say, okay, well, what have you been doing for the last 10 years? You know, so that kind of is common sense. Denise Hoover. Oh, can you elaborate about which committees 103B will be able to now sit on? I really, I can't elaborate on that. It's going to depend on the hospitals and what they committees they allow you to sit on. And that's going to be individual to the hospitals. There's nothing that's come out that say you can sit on this committee, this committee, this committee. You know, it's just that you can, you know, be voted to sit on committees. Martin Alexandrian, I'm a psych MP in LA practicing for five years. I have my own outpatient practice in office, but currently working with a supervising doctor. I'm paying a fee to, to be my supervising physician. Can I bill my patients independently or do I still need my physician? Aside from being the supervising physician, the office gives me no other benefits. You can bill under your name, but again, the contract with the physician has to look like Basically, the money that you're paying him is coming off the patients that you're seeing and you're getting the remainder of that money. So it's it's all in the contract. The contract has to be set up appropriately. And if it looks like that, that he's getting X amount and that, you know, you get the remainder amount for the services and you can you you can bill the pay, patients directly and, you know, fee for service. But excuse me, the contract with the physician has to be set up appropriately. Andrea Van Beek, can you describe the difference from what the change will be from the 103 to the 104? Basically, the 104, they're going to want more experience and you will be able to function independently. Um, and so, and then you, let me see here. You'll be able to practice in any any setting independently. You won't have to be just in a, in a medical. Um, and you will have had more hours. So that's basically, you know, what it's going to do. It's 
103, you can't practice independently. 104, you can. That's going to be the biggest change. But again, you're going to have to provide more hours of experience. Nancy Pike, I practice in cardiac surgery as an MP. I'm not a surgeon. Assume that I always need to practice in the hospital. Um, that depends on, uh, you know, the surgery. I, I, I mean, I'm not sure what you do in surgery. I, I had an MP that worked in um, doing catheterizations and that kind of thing. And um, she, well, she had to work under standardized procedures and stuff. But now with her physician signing that, um, I don't think she'll have to work under standardized procedures. Um, so, I mean, if you're doing surgery and working with a physician, I would imagine you're always going to need the surgeon. Um, I don't know if I answered that or not. Um, but if you're seeing patients after surgery and follow up and that kind of thing, um, you wouldn't you would need standardized procedures or the supervising physician. Suzanne Wang, how does the DMP help qualify for the 104? As I said, you don't if you're doing a clinical DMP, you won't then you'll need I think two years instead of three years of practice for the 104. Brittany Lute, why is nursing the only profession in California that has these restrictions? I have no idea. And like I said, it's our board of nursing. Um, yeah, our Nurse Practice, uh, Practice Act is one of the most general in the United States because I've worked all over the United States. And it's because our, our BRN is union controlled. We don't have an independent board. Every other board in California is made up of a variety of people in the professions, like the medical board supports their MDs more, but the physicians don't belong to unions. The physical therapists don't belong to unions. Um, we have the only board in, in the state of California that's union controlled. So we do whatever the union wants and the CNA runs it. And that's why. Susan Buck, can MPs who meet California testation rules practice telehealth independently in other states if they pay? Well, you don't even need the attestation to practice telehealth in other independent states. All you need is a license in that state and you can practice telehealth in that state. So you don't need the attestation to practice. And I have MPs that are only doing um, telehealth in other states and nothing in California uh, because they you know, it's easier. But the thing is, if you have, like, if you're going to do anything with DEA and everything, you have to have that registered in the other state. And so you do have some, you know, in a foreign corporation and stuff like that. So you do need to make sure you follow all the laws. And Anuli Agadia, being been an MP since 2003, would like to move to California to telehealth, New Jersey residents. Do I see any, I don't know the laws in New Jersey are. If you're an independent state and you're just doing it in New Jersey, then no, you don't need a collaborating physician. Anonymous under 103 or 104 is the admitting privilege. Oh, I'm just scheduled for something at 630. Just a second. Yvonne, I'm still on the um, this conference call I've been on. So let me call you back, okay? Did you get that? Yvonne, I'm I'm still I'm still on a webinar that I've been on since five, so I'll call you back. Okay, sorry, I had a, a something scheduled at six thirty. Um, okay, under one hundred three, one hundred four is the admitting privilege in nursing home going to change for MPs only for the MDs? They decide on their admitting privileges. So um, if they allow MPs to admit then they can, but I that's up to the individual nursing home. Uh, Eric Meyer, can we, can't we use a DBA that does not mention? No, that's not a good idea because if you ever get investigated then the board of nursing is gonna go into and say, okay, you know, you were trying to hide that you were a professional nursing corporation. You were trying to hide that. Why were you trying to hide that? So you're playing with fire when you do a DBA. You really are. Mariana Shinoda, so in 2026, a 104 MP will be able to operate the medical corporation without a physician. Or how do I reshape my clinic to be solo? 
you know, it, you, you just change your medical corporation, you amend it to a nursing corporation and you're solo. That's what it's looking like right now. Okay. Risa Orvio, hello, I'm an FMP, but practicing pediatric MP under the supervision for a peds for a year now. Will there be a restriction in practicing peds if I go independently in the future as a peds MP? No, because you're an FMP. So you can practice from death, uh, from birth to death. So you shouldn't have any problems practicing pediatrics. Anonymous, if you have a nursing corp seeing patients for a session, can you bill the MP services under the MD? Yeah, if the MD agrees to that, you certainly can do that. Mm -hmm. Shanetta Hill, what's the difference between a nursing corp and a medical corp? Medical corp is owned 51% by the physician, 49% by the nurse practitioner. Nursing corp is owned 100% by the nurse practitioner. Usually when you bill through a medical corp, you get better reimbursement than a nursing corp does. Um, and um, you have a little bit more leeway and you're not as much under scrutiny with a medical corp as you are a nursing corp. Zinabel, is the federal government elimination of the X-ray wave year already in fact? I honestly don't know. I would have to look that up. If I'm a 104, can I be a PI for clinical trial? Um, PI, that means personal injury. For, to me, Barbara, do you know what PI or PL or That would PMI? be the principal investigator. Um, why not? I don't see why not. If they accept you as the principal investigator, sure. Anonymous for 104 status. When the regulation states that consultation with a physician is required if there's change in patients considered, I'm not referring to the referral process but specifically consulting collaborating requires. How can MPs at the 104 status not navigate this if they don't have a supervising physician when fully independent in 26, 2026? Well, it sounds right. And again, I don't know what the specifics are going to be in 2026, but it looks from what they're saying right now that you just have a pro have to have a protocol for that. Um, and um, that... You know, if it's a hospital, then one protocol for the entire hospital or medical practice or your nurse practitioner practice, it'll just be a protocol and that's it. Anonymous, will any of these changes apply to nurse midwives or only MPs? Um, thus far, midwives are not specified anywhere in this, so I don't think so. Anonymous, can a 104 supervise new grad MPs to get the no, it, to get the 4,600 hours needed. No, you have to be under supervision for 4,600 hours. Are you saying can in the 104 supervise new grads? Oh, I see, to get the 4,600 hours needed by the new grad. No, right now it's a supervising physician, not a nurse practitioner. Jonathan, do hours of patient care in my own nursing corp count towards 103 hours? Um, well, if it's under physician supervision, then it would, and your physician will attest to it. Chirag, I'm confused about comments you made regarding the DMP in 20. I don't know what comments you're asking me that you're confused about, so I can't answer your question. Christy King, what happens if literally this happens? If a former supervising family physician has dropped dead and is unable to sign the attestation? Ugh, that's a good question that I can't answer. Um, I can't answer that question. I don't know how the BRN will look at that because that is not spelled out anywhere in the law. So um, I can't answer that question. Diane McGinnis, I'm from out of state, always been autonomous. I don't have a physician. Can I just get a license to start practicing or do I need a physician still? I don't know what state you're from. So if you come to California, you can get a California license, but you can't just start practicing. You have to get three years of supervision in California. If you're from a state, I, I don't know what state you're from, so I I don't know, only in California. 
Jonathan Lowe, to be clear, the three years of full-time practice to be a one of three must be tamed in California. Yes. DMPs will not get any advantages, makes this process easier. They'll have to go one, they'll have to be one less. If they do two years of clinical in their DMP, they'll need one less year to get to um, uh, the 104. They only need two years instead of three. Anonymous, if I currently have a clinical DMP, have practiced with my DMP for five years, can I be a four, 104 immediately or do I have to have a 103 first? Um, you're going to need six years of experience, period. So um, you, what you could do is apply for the 103 and 104 at the same time because you would have the total of six years. And Denise says, please give us that info because we will likely need it. I don't know what info you, you need. Brittany, how are MPs protected? What if all a patient, a, a physicians opposed to the full practice authority refuse to sign attestations? I don't think that's going to happen. I haven't seen that. Most family practice will sign them. Um, the, the medical um, CMA, CMA, California Medical Association, is mainly made up of a lot of specialists, um, and they have the money. So I don't think there's going to be a lot of problems, you know, with that. Hopefully not. I mean, obviously that could present a problem, but, um, you know, I don't know if, if they refuse. Um, I don't, I, I'm not sure what, what you're, uh, what you're going to be able to do. I am confused. Can an MP create a medical corp or nursing corp only? An MP can create a, a, a medical corp with a physician, 51% owner. A nurse practitioner can have their own nursing corp, but that nursing corp must provide services for a medical corp or a physician. Eric Meyer, why are the unions against us? Mainly because they don't have control of us and uh, there are more, far more nurses than there are MPs. So um, they're more interested in RNs. And like I said, RNs can do certain things under standardized procedures that MPs can. So that's why they're against us. Shanetta Hill, I'm an FMP in California. So interested in Oprah operating my own practice. Can I open a clinic today if I hire a collaborating? Well, I would advise you to open under a medical corporation, as I suggested, with a physician being 51% owner if you want to bill and get paid. Um, most insurances won't pay nursing corporations. Um, thank you, Uchichi. Anika, if I work under a physician but not through my nursing corp, does the 46 hours count? Um, yeah, as long as the physician will sign the attestation that they were supervising you for those hours, it will count. Mariana Shinoda, can I 103 or 104 become the medical director for any business? Well, 103 can't, no. And um, and in 104, eventually what you would be would be the nursing director, not medical director. Judith, thank you. Please disregard if not okay. But how... How do how does one list your PLLC as a prior invitation to a potential employer? I don't know what Barbara again. PLLC to me is professional licensed liability company. I don't know what else it means. A professional limited liability company, which you can't do right in no, California. You can't you do that in California. So unless it means something else, that's all I know it means. You can't do that because there is no such thing. Lynn Coates, Lisa, can I change a current nurse? Sure, you can, absolutely. You can amend it to a medical corporation. No problem. Can you finish reading the questions before answering, not catching the complete question? Okay, so answer doesn't make sense. Okay. Please post name and author of book. I think um, you're talking about process protocols yeah we Bye. put the link in the chat the link okay. for the book is in the chat 
Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Is your DMP required in 2026 with attestation already signed with having already acquired six years of experience? No, a DMP right now will not be required uh, for the attestation or to get full practice in 2026. Excuse me. What's the difference between having a nursing corp and a med corp? A med corp, uh, you have more leeway. Uh, most insurance companies will pay a med corp. You can pay at the doc. You can bill at the doctor's rate. Nursing corps, a lot of insurance companies won't pay nursing corp, and then you have to pay. You have to bill at a lower rate usually at a nursing corp. And the nursing corp has to be providing services for the medical corp. Mariana Shinoda, I'm not sure if I understand if as a 103 MP, I can practice without standardized procedures and without a collaborating physician. Then why can't I be completely ended, independent? What else do I need? Because the law states you can't be independent. The law states that you can only practice without standardized procedures and a collaborating physician, but there has to be a physician in the place that you're working with, medical corporation, medical group, there has to be a physician. Why the law is written that way, have no idea, but that's the way it's written. And I think part of it is because they want to make sure the MPs have more experience. So that's why they're requiring more supervision um, for um, a 104 MP. P.G. Simmons, do you know if any collaborative and companies in com California? I know because I just don't recommend them. Uh, collaborative MD provides, but the provider is not in California, and that's why I haven't gone with them. I'm still looking for a physician. The other thing you can try sometimes if there's any medical schools around you um, or hospitals that have uh, interns and residents. Uh, People have used um, social media, you know, looking for physicians or, um, oh, what are, I, I can't think of um, the, uh, I can't think of the names of some of the, you know, you can try on LinkedIn, you can try on some of those, um, but yeah, your collaborative physician has to be in California. Brittany Watson can MPs who have their doctorate go by doctor? Oh gosh, doctor or so and so in California. I'm a do I'm doctor X nurse practitioner. When I introduce myself to patient coworkers, absolutely not. I'm involved in a case now where they're trying to get the nurse practitioner to surrender her license because she used the prefix doctor in front of her name. There's a statute in California that states the only person can use the DR prefix in front of their names. Oh, sorry. In front of their name is a physician. So no, you and if you have any kind of blog or anything at all that has DR in front of your name, you need to get rid of it because this case has been going on now for a year and they want the nurse practitioner to surrender her license. So no, do not use DR in front of your name. Mm -mm. Mariana Shinoda, if I have a medical corporation, do I have to put that physician as getting X amount monthly and that's it? Or will it jeopardize the practice if it is in the governing docs? No, you have the medical director collaborating physician agreement. And in that it states what the physician is getting. Then you, you know, you have the shareholders, you have the bylaws, you have the um, first minutes. Uh, the Articles of Incorporation. So no, that's in the contract you have. It doesn't jeopardize anything. Eric Meyer, if I, if language of my S Corp does not include the services provided to an MT because it was drawn up by corporate labor, can an addendum be added some like someone yourself retroactively? I wouldn't do it retroactively. That's dishonest. S Corporation also is a designation for, uh, for the IRS. It is not a professional designation. You have to have a professional designation and you can file your corporation as an S corporation. S corporation is strictly for the IRS and means that monies gained or lost go directly to your taxes. And yes, all you need is to have a contract drawn up 
with that physician stating that you know you're providing services i would happy be happy to do that if you contact me alicia schroeder how do you protect yourself as a business owner if the md owns 51 percent of your corporation and the payers pay the corp seems like you are open to legal issues what legal issues if you have a shareholders agreement that states that no decisions can be made without you know complete uh uh, agreement with both shareholders. And then uh, when the money comes into the medical corporation, the physician gets his income, his salary, and then, you know, all the bills and stuff are paid by the corporation and you pay yourself a salary. You can also pay yourself bonuses if you want to. So it's completely legal. Does CRNA have a different board? Why can't we MPs have our own board. What is it needed? What is what is needed to the BRN to our own MP board? Well, I have suggested that myself because as we all know, the PAs have their own board. So why can't we have our own board? Because the Board of Registered Nursing won't allow it because then they won't have control. And so it's all about a control issue. The go Governor Newsom will do anything the Board of Registered Nursing wants. He has absolutely no interest in what the Board of Registered Nursing does. That's why we don't have our own board. Um, I th as I believe the CRNAs, uh, they are still under, I be believe, trying to think, they're under the medical board and the nursing board, I believe. Uh, they don't have their own board, no. Uh, they're basically more under the Board of Registered Nursing, but the medical board has input. But the main reason we don't have our own board is because uh, the Board of Registered Nursing won't, won't even hear about it. They won't even think about it. And Governor Newsom doesn't want to do anything. And our organization has never uh, been real interested in doing it. Anonymous, do I need six years total with a DMP to get a 104? Or can I get a 104 with no DMP but over six years of MP license and practice. If you have six years, according to the law now, you can get a 104. As I said before, what they're saying now, you only have to have uh, four years if you have a DMP with a clinical specialty. Where can we find the law about nursing corporations needing to pay physician? There's no such law. What I have learned is representing MPs before the Board of Nursing and with the medical board complaints, that's where I've learned that um, the, uh, med the Board of Registered Nursing sees the nurse practitioners as being independently, practicing independently when they're just paying the collaborating physician. They see that the uh, nurse practitioner still has to have and work under the supervising physician. And that's why the 103 is stating that. You cannot, as a 1099, you can't, you can't, um, you can't utilize 103. You have to be an employee. So basically, as a nursing corporation, you can work under the, you know, providing nurses or MP services as a 1099, but you um the Board of Nursing will not not let you do it. You go ahead and keep doing it and you're fine until something happens and you get caught and the Board of Registered Nursing is going to say, hey, you're trying to practice independently. You can't just go out there and provide services with a collaborating physician. You need to be working for that collaborating physician. So there's no law. And that's why attorneys that don't work with nurse practitioners all the time, they just go by what the law is. And our board of registered nursing, I mean, I'd rather have a hundred medical board, PA board, PT board cases to one nursing board case. That is how difficult our board of registered nursing is to work with. Okay, Alicia, we have a friend in Idaho who works at an MP owned clinic. They take insurance, they get paid without issue. So carriers will not pay us in California, but will now at, will in Idaho. Absolutely, Idaho is an independent state. I have a uh, a nurse practitioner that um, it's an attorney. Also, she just moved to Idaho, completely independent. 
So the same insurance carriers, they're all run differently and they go by what um, the physicians and the, the unions and what everybody wants in California. That's what they go by. Anonymous. In an employer contract, can you list your LLC as a prior invention by you to avoid your employer claiming your company? Uh, it makes no sense to me. I don't know what you're talking about because number one, you can't, if you're a professional, you have a nursing corp, not an LLC, and an LLC is not an invention, so your question makes no sense. If you're a nursing corporation working for a company, that company can't claim to own you because the company is hiring you as a 1099 and you are paying yourself with a W-2. So they can't own you. So I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, what about a dual board certified MP? So it, for instance, if an ACMP is working currently in the ED and uh, not an F MP board certified without an ENP, how does specialty practice in an APRN consensus model configure into practice in which are the presently practice? Okay, Barbara, I need help with that one. If you're... I'm well, wondering if the question is to have that specialty certification maybe, or not specialty, but you have to have that attestation for practice within your board certification, but they're not certified in an EMP. Is, that may be what she's asking, she or he is asking. What about poor doodle? Um, What's the EMP? Uh, uh, emergency. Oh, emergency. Oh, mer oh I yeah. Something else. Yeah. So I'm thinking um, that that's what it is. And this person is an acute care. Oh. Um, so they're acute care, um, not an FMP and not an ENP. Room. So how does specialty practice work with the 103? That's how I'm reading it. Um, they've not specified that particularly, but what you would have to do is show, demonstrate that you had experience or education somehow working as an emergency room nurse practitioner as an acute care. Um, you would have to prove to the Board of Registered Nursing that you're qualified to work in that area is what I would imagine. I don't know if that answered it. Okay, Mariana, if I am a 103 MP owning a med spa, do I have to have, do I have to have a physician or can I oh my gosh, employ a physician on call and that will satisfy the law? No, of having a physician in the practice. Okay, if you have a medical corporation, med spa, okay, then you still have that physician as a medical director because you still need a medical director, but you won't need the physician, you won't need standard standardized procedures or the physician is collaborating physician but you will still need the physician you will still need a medical corporation and a medical director so you would still have to pay him as a medical record medical director but you would not have to pay him under standardized procedures or um you know a collaborating physician hannah kroll can you use a pediatrician example if you're seeing adult patients does it have to be within the same scope of practice? Yes. You can't use a pediatrician for an adult practice. Oh, thank you, Anonymous. Alicia, finally, maybe give us a blurb about your services, an idea of how much it would cost to have you set up our medical corp and management company. Oh, I hate to talk about stuff over the internet. Um, Bottom line, what I do is I I'm ch I charge flat fees, and it depends how involved and what specifically you need. So, um, you know, and, and and that's part of it. That's why I prefer, you know, to you know, set up a consult or have a 
a conversation with someone to see exactly what they need because I found that sometimes people don't need everything and if you don't need as much then it costs less money so just to give a flat fee without knowing exactly what you need um I can't do it because it just varies um you know what you have so far and what you need um, and so I would hate to put a fee out there and then not be able to stand by it for some reason. But I'm more than happy if you contact me, I'm happy to set up a consult, free consult with you and discuss, you know, what your needs would be and how much it would be. And I've been putting your link into the chat for everybody so they can oh. get your contact information. So that's easy. And I'm going to go ahead and like shut off questions because okay. I know we have kept you over and beyond what you have had, because you've had some other appointments that you need yeah. to get to. So I just, you know, there's been some thank yous coming in. And and again, I appreciate um, you taking this much time to talk to us about all of this, Melanie. And <clears throat> I'm sure we'll be talking again. And to everybody who is listening, I will have the replay link out to you as soon as I can, but give me a couple of days, please. So um, with that, I'm going to say good night and thank you again, Melanie. Okay. Well, I hope I answered a lot of your questions. I'm sorry I couldn't answer all of them, but it's crazy here in California. It will. Yeah, California is a crazy state. I grew up oh. there and I don't remember it being this crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay. Well, everyone have a good evening. Good night now. Thank you Bye. again. Bye-bye, everyone. Uh -huh.